All right, so now we'll talk about setting the, the kind of bear trap. There's a few different things you can use to set them. Probably one of the most common that folks are, are aware of is the metal handed setters that you can purchase. Um, they simply have a notch on each bar of those metal setters, kind of a scissor type. They'll, climp, they'll crimp on each side of the spring and compress it to where you can then put the safety latch on. Personally, I like to use what's known as the rope setting method. Um, it simply takes a stout length of rope with a loop tied in the middle large enough to go around your boot foot. Um, I like the rope for a few different reasons. One, it's nice and lightweight and compact, and for the most part, you can find a length of rope for free, if not very cheap. Um, and also, should an accident occur and you do get a finger or an arm or anything caught within the kind of bear trap in the field far off and you're on your own, you have a chance of releasing yourself with this rope method. It can compress the springs of the kind of bear trap with just one hand uh, available to use. Um, otherwise, you'll have to go back, pack out of the, pack out of the beaver swamp or woods to uh, have someone else release you that, that knows how to operate a kind of bear trap. So I do like the rope for those two reasons. So now we'll demonstrate using the rope method. First off, I always like to start with the trigger on the bottom. I like to have the trigger on the bottom because it allows my safeties to hang free and out of the way. It allows them to very easily be put over the springs once they're compressed. Otherwise, you run the risk of the spring going through, or as the spring tightens, you can have your safeties on the wrong side. And very, it can be very difficult to get them around that corner. So we'll demonstrate the rope method right now. Start with your tag end of the rope in the bottom of the spring, moving through the top. Pull it through to where your boot loop is just a little bit away from the, from the bottom ring there, just a few inches just like that. And then once again, bring your tag end through the bottom spring again, up through the top spring, all the way through to where it's tight. So you can see we have our boot loop, boot loop at the bottom. Tag end has been run from the bottom to the top spring twice and back out the top. This is what you will hold on to compress the to compress the trap. Put one boot over top of the trigger, just inside the trap. Take your other boot and put it through the loop. Once you've got a good firm setting, and I always recommend to do this on a good hard surface, not in a muddy, soft swamp. Once you're on a good hard surface with good firm footing, simply give a little bit of outside tension on that boot loop and then firmly pull up. And you'll always find that your springs are going to stop right here at the hinge. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to hold this rope. Once you've got your springs hooked on at the, uh, or caught up right here at the hinge, simply take and put a little inside pressure on the spring and just help coax it over that hinge. Now the rest of it's fairly easy from this point on, but very important. Press the springs as far as you can. You can see the free swinging, free swinging safety here can easily be placed over the spring and slid up to where it's got good tension. Now we simply release, and you can see the spring is also now free swinging too. Unhook it, and simply back the rope out opposite way that you would put it on. So right now this trap is unable to catch you um, because of the other spring being compressed. But this is an example of a compressed spring versus a non-compressed spring. And we'll simply flip the trap around and do the other side. So again, pull your tag in from the bottom top loop with your boot loop just, just outside that spring and then once again tag in from the bottom to the top hold tight step on step on the bottom frame of the trap place the loop over your boot and pull up guide it over the hinge continue to pull Always be sure to place your spring over the coil, over the, your, your, I'm sorry, your safety latch over the spring and slide it up to where it stays firm. And then again, back your rope out. 
Now right now, this trap is unable to cause any harm or any danger because it's not set yet. It's still in the folded uh, release position. Now is the time to be sure to take, take extra precaution, extra care, and take your time in setting the trap because from now on, we will be in a situation that the trap could potentially catch us if we're left unaware or uncareful about how we're, how we're arranging our hands and, and feet and everything else at this point. Center up the dog in the frame of the trap and the trigger. Right now, we can take, fold the trap up, and you can see right now, although we were setting the trap where the trigger was on the bottom, now our latches, when we compress this trap, this kind of bare frame, the safety latches can come off. So after you have the trap compressed, flip it over. Where now your dog and your trigger are both on top of the frame, and your safety catches cannot fall down and off the springs. They can only fall down and further on the springs as well. It be another safety measure to where you're not caught in the conifer trap. And right now, if these safeties were left off these springs, it could compress and potentially cause harm. So all it takes is a little bit of pressure on the frame of the conifer trap, and all the while I'm keeping my fingers just on the edge to where if the trap should fire, my hands will kind of roll off and out of the way. Reach back to your dog, flip the dog over, and there are two notches in the dog. The first one is the lightest setting, uh, and the one that I prefer on almost all of my sets. And then slowly release the trap once that seating, that notch on the dog has gone over the frame. Right now again, the trap is set. It could potentially fire, and we're constantly keeping an eye on our safety latches, making sure they're on these springs. A third safety for yourself, and I highly recommend these. Uh, they're very inexpensive, just uh, you know, five, ten dollars, right in that range. It's a kind of air safety. This is an extra precautionary tool that you can have that simply places over uh, the arm of both uh, both sides of the kind of air frame and holds together. Should these two safeties fail and the kind of air be tripped, you have a third safety. Um, this is one of the last things I remove before. Uh, leaving the counter bear set alongside both the safeties on the coil. That is essentially how the counter bear is set.